All right, so we're going to go over RC series circuits. One thing you're going to need to do, um, if you have a Herman's uh, 7th edition or Del Mar's, depending on how your school calls it, Appendix B for formulas is the place to get the best to get formulas out of. Um, we're going to work this example problem. So in this case, we've been given our VARs at C1, at capacitor 1, capacitor 2, and our power. We're going to use VA volt amps equals P the power squared VARs plus VAR squared square root of. So square root of power squared plus VAR squared. And that's going to give us... That's going to give us 10.625 volt amps. I note it as volt amps. Other people don't, but that's how I prefer to note it, so I know what I'm looking at. Um, so the way you get this is it's on the triangle using the um, Pythagorean's theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You add these two together. That gives you your total of R's um, for those two. And then using your power, then using A squared plus B squared equals C squared gives your volt amps. That's exactly what that does. But you're looking for this angle here. This is angle theta that you're looking for because you need it in order to find your angle theta and your power factor. So using... So Katoa, so Ka, the adjacent over the hypotenuse is going to give you 0 0.4706. Or if it's like my calculator, it keeps giving me 0 0.47 because it doesn't want to round anything. So with that, you know that that is your power factor, 47.06%. So 47.06%. And when you do the inverse function to the um, 0.4706, it gives you the angle. The angle is 61.93 degrees. So you've solved that. Now, to solve pardon me, to solve for your oh excuse me i got a little confused there um when i want to find my i total that's the next thing i'm gonna look for i'm gonna solve, divide my e total by my volt amps and that comes out to be 0.25 amps zero and I, in the book they put a point zero but that's fine i don't worry about that too much 0.25 0.25 0.25. And then with this, I go back and I use go back to power formula in Ohm's law. P divided by I will give me my E. And that's going to give me 20 volts. And in this location, I'm going to get 15 volts because you're going to use X, XC divided by EC. E, XC equals EC divided by IC. That's going to give you 15 volts. And then over here, you're going to get 22.5 volts. So with that, you have plenty of working knowledge. Because now I can solve for R, right? E divided by I. And that should give me 80 ohms. It's easier to do because 1 fourth or 20 divided by 1 fourth, you flip it and 4 times 20. Um, and then we're going to get 60 ohms here. 60 ohms here. And then using, um, we can find total impedance. Z equals R squared plus uh, XC squared. And that's going to give us 170 ohms. Hundred and seventy ohms, and then um, we're going to use capacitance equals one over two pi frequency xc. And since capacitance, I, 
if you do not mention hertz in the United States, it is 60 hertz. So the frequency is 60 hertz. And then what that gives us in our capacitance is 44.2 microfarads. And you guys have to do the prefix conversion for full credit. And that solves this. That's the way it works out. Now remember, Appendix B is your go-to for finding information. Let me see what else I want to go over before I let this go. Um, unit measurement and capacitance is farads. Three factors for a capacitor. I don't know that I went over this in any other lecture, so I'm going to put it up here. All right, so you have a dielectric, and you have plates, and you have your electrodes. So things, uh, three, three factors that determine the amount of capacitance a capacitor will have is the area of the plates, how big the plates are. Distance between the plates. And the type of dielectric. We'll get to parallels in the next uh, lecture.